Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Hey, everybody. Casey here, host of Trivia for Kids, the podcast. And I am joined by my co-host, Ren. Ren, for episode numero 95 of Trivia for Kids, the podcast. And if this is your first time listening to us, thanks for joining us. We're really happy that you're here. Mm -hmm. So today, this podcast is brought to you by the letter S. Do you know why it's brought to you by the letter S, Ren? Superman. No. (laughs) Well, I don't know. Maybe. Because it's Saturday. It's snowing. You and Quinn were playing the Switch. And Brooks has the stomach flu. And he's sick. And he is sick. Yep. So I feel like last week we were talking about how Quinn and I were sick. And I made the comment that our family hadn't been very sick lately. And it was only a matter of time. And Brooks came home from school yesterday. And here we are. Puked. Pew, he did. Poor guy. The stomach flu is just so, oh, it's so bad. I feel so bad for him because there's nothing you can do except like, well, you just got to get over it. So if anybody out there is feeling under the weather, I'm so sorry for you. And we're in the same boat. So I hope you feel better soon. And I hope Brooks feels better soon, right? Kind of like the Dory thing. Just keep swimming. Just keep yes. swimming. All you can do is just keep swimming with the stomach flu. Ugh. All right. Well, enough about stomach flu. How about some jokes to lighten the mood? Sweet. Sweet. There's another letter S. All right. The first joke comes from Emily, who is from New Zealand. Thank you. What do you call a cow with no legs? I have no idea. Ground beef. <laughs> All right. And the next joke comes from Amelia. Thanks, Amelia. Why did the turkey cross the road? I have no idea. To prove he wasn't a chicken. (laughs) I feel like there's a lot of crossing the road jokes. And the next joke comes from listener Henry. Thank you, Henry. What do you have when you hang out with a Minecraft creeper? The creeps. A blast. (laughs) What? Your face. Why? Because when you kill creepers in survival mode, normally they blow up. Yeah, that's why it's a joke. Because it's a blast. All right. And this last joke comes from listener Bennett, who is five, and he made this joke up. Thank you, Bennett. What do you call a book rolling down a hill? I don't know. A road roll. (laughs) I love it when kids make up jokes. So funny. Sometimes a joke doesn't have to make sense for it to still be funny, right? All right. Are you ready for the round of your life? Yeah. There's a lot of pressure. All right, let's go. Let's go. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round number one, the category is candy. Question one, what is the name of the chocolate bar that consists of caramel, nuts, and nougat covered in milk chocolate? Question two, which candy brand produces a chewy, fruity candy shaped like small squares and is often packaged in a yellow package? Question three, what candy bar name is an abbreviation for Twin Biscuit Sticks? Question four. As of 2023, what is the most popular Jelly Belly jelly bean flavor? Very cherry, buttered popcorn, or juicy pear? Question five. 
Question five. What is the name of the colorful tablet candy that usually comes in a clear plastic wrapped roll? Question six. Nonpareils are more commonly known as what baking decoration? Question seven. What candy's slogan is get the sensation? And now the round one answers. Ren, I chose this category just for you, my darling. <laughs> Why do you think I did that? Because I love candy. Because you love candy more than anybody, except maybe your grandma, my mom. Do you think grandma loves candy more than you? Probably. Probably. Ren gets her sweet tooth from my mother, who has a candy closet. No joke. She's got a closet where she keeps candy. It's insane. Question one. What is the name of the chocolate bar that consists of caramel, nuts, and nougat covered in milk chocolate? Nougat. I've heard of that before. I know what it is. Uh, Snickers? Yes, it is Snickers. I think nougat is that sort of like fluffy, marshmallowy kind of part oh, in it. So- it's not marshmallow, but I'm just trying to give you like a consistency yeah. idea. Like, like a Milky Way has yeah. nougat in it too. Yeah. yeah. Question two, which candy brand produces a chewy, fruity candy shaped like small squares and is often packaged in a yellow package? Starburst. It is Starburst. So Starburst has a lot of different flavor options. What is your favorite Starburst? Um, probably the really light pink one. Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably everybody's favorite. And they liked all the pink ones so much that they made a Starburst all reds, which is also like fruit punch and cherry and stuff too. But I remember when I was little, I always told everybody my favorites were the yellows because not a lot of people like the yellows and then they didn't want them and then they gave them to me. (laughs) So question three, what candy bar is an abbreviation for twin biscuit sticks? M&M's? Twix. Oh. (laughs) I did not know that it was an abbreviation of anything. I just thought it was the name Twix. But no, twin biscuit sticks makes perfect sense. Question four. As of 2023, what is the most popular Jelly Belly jelly bean flavor? Very cherry, buttered popcorn, or juicy pear? Juicy pear. The answer is very cherry. I was going to say, if you said buttery popcorn, I'd puke. Very cherry remained the most popular flavor of Jelly Belly jelly beans for two decades until buttered popcorn took the spot in 1998. In 2003, Very Cherry retook the title and has remained the most popular ever since. So they actually did pick buttery popcorn. Have you had buttered popcorn? It's delicious. I mean, I've had it before, but it it tastes just like buttered popcorn. What is your favorite Jelly Belly flavor? I haven't had Jelly Belly since two years ago when we were in Florida. Oh, when we did the bamboozled or the bean boozled? And you got, what was the worst one you ate? What's it called? Um, I think it was Dirty Dishwasher. Ew, Dirty Dishwater? I only had one because I, it would have made me sick. And ironically, the one I ate was puke. But yeah, being boozled, I couldn't do it. It, it, bleh. And there was like old Band-Aid and some yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Question five. What is the name of the colorful tablet candy that usually comes in a plastic wrapped roll? I have no idea. Smarties. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you not think of them? No. We like Smarties. Yeah. I feel like we get Smarties at parades a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Question six. Nonpareils are more commonly known as what baking decoration? Non what now? Nonpareils. What's a parel? That is the question I'm asking you. Fondant. Ooh, fondant. That's a good guess. The answer is sprinkles. 
Nonpareils are a decorative confectionery of tiny balls made with sugar and starch. Traditionally an opaque white, but now available in many colors. So I feel like sometimes when I watch a baking show, they say, oh, I can taste the nonpareils or whatever. And really they're just saying, oh, you put sprinkles on it. Question number seven. What candy's slogan is get the sensation? I don't know. York peppermint patties. I love those and I don't know the thing. Like the thing. When I was a kid, this was probably more prevalent. And I remember commercials and it would be like somebody on the top of a mountain getting ready to ski and they'd bite into a York peppermint patty. And it was all like minty and like their breath would show and it would say, get the sensation. So you probably haven't even heard of that before, but Yorks are one of our favorites, aren't they? Yeah. Round number two. The category is underwater. Question one. Which sea creature is known for its ability to produce electric shocks for defense and hunting? Question two. Which underwater structure is built by colonies of tiny marine animals and provides a habitat for a variety of sea life? Question three. In what ocean can you find the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the world's oceans? Question four. Which type of underwater plant, often found in oceans, provides essential oxygen for marine life? Question five. Which ocean is the smallest and the shallowest of the major oceans? Question six. The green species of a certain water boa is found in South America's rivers. What type of water boa is this? Question seven. What small common forage fish can be found in marine and fresh water and is sometimes eaten out of a can or served on a pizza. Because it's underwater, get it? Question one, which sea creature is known for its ability to produce electric shocks for defense and hunting? Eels. Electric eels, or there's also electric rays. I didn't know that. There is? I guess so. Electric eels are one of, again, I don't like to call animals ugly, but man, these things are not cute. Have you seen one in the aquarium? Remember those? Yeah, they are hideous. So cool, though. I could look at them all day. Question two. Which underwater structure is built by colonies of tiny marine animals and provides a habitat for a variety of sea life? Coral reefs. That is correct. Very good. Question three. In what ocean can you find the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the world's oceans? I don't know, the Pacific or Southern? It is in the Pacific Ocean, correct. And the Mariana Trench is around 7 miles or 11 kilometers deep. Wow. Wow. Do you think you could get to the bottom of the Mariana Trench? Um, I think somebody has once to the... No, 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 no. People are trying to get as low as possible, but there's so much pressure down there that we don't have, we have not come up with anything that can get us all the way down there. So there could be thousands and thousands of marine animals and things that we don't even know exist yet. Question four, what type of underwater plant often found in oceans provides essential oxygen for marine life? Seaweed. Yep. Seaweed or kelp. 
I was like, uh, seaweed. And seaweed is also delicious in sushi. Question five. Which ocean is the smallest and the shallowest of the major oceans? Indian. It is the Arctic. Oh, really? Yeah. The average depth of the Arctic Ocean is 3,240 feet compared to the Pacific Ocean, which has an average depth of 14,040 feet. So the Pacific Ocean is about almost five times deeper on average than the Arctic. Wow. Wow. Question six. The green species of a certain water boa is found in South America's rivers. What type of water boa is this? I have no idea. I've never heard of anything like that. The anaconda. I've heard of that, but I did not know. They are in rivers in South America, and they are massive. Could you imagine seeing one in real life? I mean, I don't know what they look like. They look like giant long snakes in the water. Yuck, imagine swimming with those. Nope, I don't even want to imagine it. I'll pass. Question seven. What small common forage fish can be found in marine and freshwater and is sometimes eaten out of a can or served on a pizza? Anchovies. It is anchovies. Do you like anchovies? Never had them. Well, when we were in Italy and we were at a pizza restaurant and you could either order it with fish or without fish. That was the only option. So you either got a cheese pizza or an anchovy pizza. We picked the anchovy one. Round number three. The category is video games. Question one. What game follows Peppino Spaghetti, a stressed chef and owner of a struggling pizzeria? who is approached by a floating pizza that threatens to destroy his business with a nuclear laser. Question two. What is the name of Nintendo's first handheld gaming console? Question three. Which popular battle game features 100 players dropping onto an island to be the last person or team standing? Question four. What is the name of the villainous turtle-like creatures that are often encountered as enemies in Super Mario games? Question five, what video game features street racing events and takes place during the fictitious Horizon Festival? Question six, in Super Mario Brothers, what item grants Mario the ability to grow larger and break blocks? Question seven. In Minecraft, what are creepers supposed to do when your character gets too close? Answers to round number three. Question one. What game follows Peppino Spaghetti? a stressed chef and owner of a struggling pizzeria who is approached by a floating pizza that threatens to destroy his business with a nuclear laser. I have no idea. This game is called Pizza Tower. Never. I've never heard of it either, but it sounds super interesting. A floating pizza that can talk and going to destroy him with a laser? Wow. <laughs> it sounds pretty interesting. Question two. What is the name of Nintendo's first handheld gaming console? The Nintendo. Minus. The Game Boy. Ah. We still have Dad's Game Boy. It still works. He's only got one game, Tetris. I always wanted a Game Boy when I was young. I was so jealous Dad had one. Question three. 
Which popular battle game features 100 players dropping onto an island to be the last person or team standing? Edna Squid Games. This is called Fortnite. Oh, okay. I've never played Fortnite, so I probably would. Right. We've certainly heard of Fortnite, but we've never played it. So, but I know it's very popular. Question four. What is the name of the villainous turtle-like creatures that are often encountered as enemies in Super Mario games? Koopas or dry bones? Koopa Troopas. Yeah, I guess there are some dry bones, Koopa Troopas. So that worked too. Bowser is the... Oh, is King Koopa the same person as Bowser? Mm -hmm. I didn't put that together that Bowser was a Koopa Troopa. He is. He's so there are these type of Koopa Troopas that have these big blue shells with spikes on their back. That's where Bowser gets his spikes. Green shells, Koopas, green shells, yellow skin, yellow skin. Like in its hair, I don't know where it gets its hair. But yeah. But he's a King Koopa of everything. I did not realize he was one of them. Thank you for that information. Question five. What video game features street racing events and takes place during the fictitious Horizon Festival? Uh, I don't know. This game is called Forza Horizon. Never heard of it. I had neither. But it sounds fun. Question six. In Super Mario Brothers, what item grants Mario the ability to grow larger and break blocks? Mushroom. It is the Super Mushroom. That makes him get bigger. Question seven. In Minecraft, what are creepers supposed to do when your character gets too close? Blow up. Yeah, blow up or explode. I thought you'd get that right away since the joke was basically the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because hanging out with a creeper is... A blast. A blast. Round number four. The category is horses. Question one. What is the fastest horse breed known for its speed in short distance races? Question two. In a human eye, a pupil is round shaped, but what shape is a horse's pupil? Question three. What is the natural gait of a horse that is faster than a walk, but slower than a gallop and really bouncy? Question four. Which breed is often referred to as the gentle giant due to its large size and calm temperament? Question five. What is the term for a horse's attempt to forcibly remove its rider? Question six. If you are going to break a horse, what are you doing to it? Question seven. What is a horse's hair called? Round four answers. Question one. What is the fastest horse breed known for its speed in short distance races? Uh, I don't know. Stallion. That's a good guess. The answer is a thoroughbred. Never heard of it. So basically, thoroughbreds are any of the horses that you'll see that race, like in the Kentucky Derby or basically anywhere. Those horses are bred to be the fastest. They are thoroughbreds. Question two. In a human eye, a pupil is round shaped. But what shape is a horse's pupil? A crescent. I don't know. It is a rectangle. The horse has a rectangular pupil shape, which extends the area of visual perception. 
The size of the pupil determines the amount of light allowed into the back part of the eye. So basically, since a horse's head doesn't really swivel like ours does, you know, a horse has just a neck and it can only go so far. Its pupil is bigger so that it has a wider range of visual field. Huh. Question three. What is the natural gait of a horse that is faster than a walk, but slower than a gallop and really bouncy? I know this is called, it starts with a T, right? Yep. The, oh, trotting. It is the trot. Very good. And the trot, when you're on a horse and it's trotting, it is bumpy. Uh, 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 like that. Yeah. Question four. Which breed is often referred to as the gentle giant due to its large size and calm temperament? Quarter horse. The answer is a Clydesdale. You could also have said a draft horse or a Belgian or a Percheron or a Shire. All of those types of horses are really big. They're all work horses and they're usually very gentle. Question five. What is the term for a horse's attempt to forcibly remove its rider? Um, um, a, a buck. Yeah, bucking. Yeah. If a horse is trying to get you off its back, it's going to buck you off, right? Question six. If you are going to break a horse, what are you doing to it? I don't know. Break a record. Oh, that's a good guess. So if you're going to break a horse, you're training a horse to accept a saddle and a rider. So you have to break a horse from being a wild horse to a horse that you can ride and put a saddle on. So if you hear somebody breaking a horse, it sounds like they're hurting it, but really they're just training it. Question seven. What is a horse's hair called? A mane. It is a mane, just like a lion. Round number five. The category is musicians. Question one. What country singer's imagination library mails free books to children from birth until they begin school in participating areas? Question two. Who is the lead singer of the band Maroon 5? And is a coach on The Voice. Question three. What American singer-songwriter, known for her colorful outfits and energetic performances, sang Roar and Firework? Question four. Stephen John is better known by what name and is known for his funny and educational songs on YouTube? Question five. What unique British singer, songwriter, and actor was one of the original members of the boy band one Direction. Question six. The artist known as Eminem sings what type of music? Question seven. What popular country singer's hits include Last Night and You Proof and used to be very recognizable due to his mullet haircut? Answers to round five. Question one. What country singer's imagination library Mails free books to children from birth until they begin school in participating areas. I have no idea. Dolly Parton. We got books from Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Remember when they would send us free books every month? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they would come packaged and they were free because she just has this thing that sends free books to kids. It is just the coolest deal. I love Dolly Parton. She is just a great lady. Question two. 
who is the lead singer of the band Maroon 5 and a coach on The Voice? Mm-hmm. I love the band Maroon 5, but I forgot what the lead singer was. His name is Adam Levine. Oh, yeah. Question three. What American singer-songwriter, known for her colorful outfits and energetic performances, sang Roar and Firework? Katy Perry. It is Katy Perry. Baby, you're a fire, you work. You don't sing? Quinn would sing with me. She probably would. <laughs> Question four. Stephen John is better known by what name and is known for his funny and educational songs on YouTube? I have no idea. Blippi! Oh. <laughs> did you know that Blippi's name is Stephen John? I did not know that. Imagine how much money he gets paid. Oh, man. Blippi does just fine. Question five. What unique British singer, songwriter, and actor was one of the original members of the boy band One Direction? I don't remember hearing any songs by One Direction. Harry Styles. Question six. The artist known as Eminem sings what type of music? Rap. Yes, rap, boy. That is right in my youth. Eminem was the biggest star when I was a kid. Or when I was a teen, I should say. Question seven. What popular country singer's hits include Last Night and You Proof and used to be very recognizable due to his mullet haircut? I have no idea. Garth Brooks. His name is Morgan Wallen. Uh Have you heard of him? He cut off the mullet in August of 2023. Imagine how much people didn't, like, listen to him anymore after he cut off the mullet. mullet. They were like, nope, no mullet, no more listening to you. Morgan Wallen is very popular, and his mullet was very popular. But it's gone now. And now, it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but... These were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one. What is the fastest horse breed known for its speed in short distance races? Thoroughbred. Question two. Which underwater structure is built by colonies of tiny marine animals and provides a habitat for a variety of sea life? A coral reef. Question three. What is the most popular jelly belly jelly bean flavor? Berry cherry. Question four. The green species of a certain water boa is found in South America's rivers. What type of water boa is this? Anaconda. Question five. Which horse breed is often referred to as the gentle giant due to its large size and calm temperament? Clydesdale. Question six. What country singer's imagination library mails free books to children from birth until they begin school in participating areas? Dolly Parton. Question seven. Nonpareils are more commonly known as what baking decoration? Sprinkles. And that's the end. Here come the shout outs. Horses comes from Amelia, and she gave us some of the questions. Thank you, Amelia. It also comes from Hume, Maeve, and Beatrice. Thank you. It also comes from Simone and Solomon. Thank you. Lots of horse fans. Underwater comes from Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Video games comes from Andrew. Thank you. Forza Horizon comes from David. Thank you, David. Pizza Tower and Super Mario Brothers comes from Jason. Thank you, Jason. Minecraft comes from Henry and Shy and Aviv. Thank you. 
Candy comes from Buster and Teddy. Thank you. Dolly Parton comes from Amelia and Adeline. Thank you, Amelia and Adeline. And I have a missed shout out from the week we talked about McDonald's characters, episode 91. And that goes to listener Finn. Thank you, Finn. Thank you. All right, Ren, here's the conversation starter. What do you think is the funniest movie ever? I don't know. That's a hard one. I watch a lot of funny movies. Just give, just pick one. It doesn't have to be the one you think is the funniest. Just what's one that you're like, oh, that movie's funny. What's it called? Cool Runnings. Cool Runnings is a funny movie. That's a good choice. That's a movie from when I was a kid. My favorite movie and what I think is the funniest movie is a Christmas movie. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is my all-time favorite funniest movie. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a wonderful week. Yeah, thank you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see all of our new videos. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. Or you can email us at trivia for kids podcast at gmail.com.